doing the transmission bypass for this 2015 Chevy Silverado. So as you can see here, I've been driving for about an hour now and the transmission fluid is up to 10, it's running 190. Uh, I wanna get it around 150 or 140, you know, under. So we're gonna be doing the um, transmission, uh, I guess thermostat, whatever bypass you call it, uh, to uh, try to get these temps down. So I'm also doing the fluid filter change or fluid and filter change. So if you're interested in that, y'all can check out the other video. It's going to be a separate video because most people that click on this is probably just interested in this here. So we're going to do this, but I'm going to get this fluid uh, and I'll change that real quick. And then um, when I get to the bypass, we'll, we'll start on this. All right. So here's the bypass right here. Um, I just changed my uh, transmission fluid, as you can see by the mess. My transmission fluid and gasket and filter and all that and torqued it down. Um, but while I'm down here, I'm going to go ahead and do this so that I don't lose too much, you know, I don't have to lose any more really fluid. So if, you, if you're just doing this by itself, you're going to drip a little bit more out. Me, I'm still probably going to lose a little fluid just because, you know, it runs up to the lines, but not as much as I would with a full pan and never hadn't been opened up. So mine, some of them have these little clips, uh, retainer clips here. Uh, that you can pull the clip out and you can work the line out and then take the block off. I'm sorry if it's blurry because it's kind of low light under here. See, that's, okay, that's a little better light. So anyway, some of them, they have a uh, little retainer clips. You pull off, pull the lines out and you pull the, the bypass block here off. This one does not, it has a bolt right there. I can pull it off. I kind of like this style better. I, mean, I don't know which one really works better, but that just, to me, seems, you know, I can fool around with no clips and end up dropping one, losing it, whatever. But anyway, so I'm gonna pull that bolt so I can work my lines out and then pull this bolt off. I think this is a 15 mil, if I'm not mistaken, on the top. I'm not sure on the side, probably a 10 mil. But um, we'll check that in a second. I'm gonna get this pulled off. Correction, this is a 13 mil, <clears throat> not a 15 mil. I knew it was an odd number, but I couldn't remember which one. 13 mil. This uh, seems to be a 10 mil. I have to use a wrench because of the, um, the line being in the way. Oh. You know, the line being in the way there, you can't really get a socket on it. I these are wrench. So let me get those off real quick. I'm going to pull that first and just try to get these lines pulled, popped out. And move a, a pan under here to catch some fluid dripping down and then pull that off. So I pull my lines out and I'll, it's, it's a little bit of it's flowing out. So I'm going to let it run for a second. But that's the part number. It says Superior Solutions. Superior transmission parts. That's the kit here. I'm um, gonna get that out and look at what all's in there. So as you can see here, it's dripping just a little. Now, when I pulled these lines out, um, I found there's a rubber O-rings in there. I'm guessing it just seals. It goes on the line and seals up in there. I need to look and see if the one is still in the bottom one here. Um, when I pulled the top one out, I thought I heard something hit the pan in here. And then pull the second one out. And I looked, I just seen one O-ring sitting on the ground. So here's the bypass block. And what I was showing you, telling you about the, the O-ring, that one fell out. I thought it went in the pan, but that's the one that was on the floor. The other one is still, you can see there, um, it's still in there. So be careful, like when you pull these out, maybe hold one hand here like this, and then use your other hand to work the line out, slowly walk it out, just to make sure you don't lose those O-rings. So now we're gonna get to putting this Take the guts out of here and uh, put these pieces back together. I got a little pick. I'm going to get this O-ring out. Um, I'm going to reuse that, obviously, but I'm just going to get it out of the way for now. And it, I'm going to put it back on the lines, the transmission lines, when I put it on there. Going to need some snap ring pliers here to get the uh, snap ring out of there. So I'm going to pay attention to the, the way, the orientation that's in there, but I'm not even going to be using that. Although I am going to save these parts for later. These type are not where you squeeze down and it goes in, it goes out. So we're going to have to do it the other way here. There we go. Got it out. Of course, we're going to be reusing the snap ring there. I have some needle nose here. I'm going to try to get this Getting it to spin, but I don't know. We're gonna get some different pliers. Try to try something else. And the locker ring holds it in there, but that bad boy is not in there anymore. So it should come right on out. I don't know why they don't. I 
Again, there's another stupid GM deal here. They leave it round. I guess they got a special tool you pull these out with. They should just leave a straight on each side so that you can grab it with pliers like this and get it out. But again, they always gotta do something stupid and make a special tool for some dumb crap like this. Uh, WD-40 or some transmission fluid around it and push it in, try to lubricate it so this will slide out a little better. So I don't know what happened to my WD-40 or PV blaster I had here. It seems like anytime I need something, it goes missing. But if I don't need it, I find it easy. But anyway, got a little transmission fluid in there. I'm just gonna try to press on it and just kind of work it in there. If it'll spin and just don't want to come out. We'll just there we go. We ended up having to grab a hole to it like that with these channel locks, and of course it's boogered up. But anyway, we're not using it. I'm going to keep this in case I need it later on, but I'm not going to use it now. Um, so there's a couple things you can do. You know, let's say flip the peel, which this is be considered your peel. You flip it over, I guess, basically just to let it bypass all the time, or run all the time. Um, and then there's your spring that goes in there. Or you can, I don't know if you can see in there, you can run a tap in there and then put a plug in it and put it all back together without the internal, you know, just the cap. Uh, and it lets it flow all the time. Uh, which in a warm climate, it would that probably work fine. You know, I'm assuming all this, I think the old school transmissions never had no thermostat on them. They just ran all the time. Eventually it's gonna warm up a little anyway. I'm guessing they did this for like cold climates you know, up north or wherever. Uh, but in the south where I'm at or somewhere where it's hot all the time, you could probably tap and plug that and be fine. And I actually thought about that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this kit first. Keep an eye. Mine usually runs around 187 to 190. 190 sometimes, most of it stays right around 187 when it's up to full temp. So I'm gonna run this kit, keep an eye on the um, temperature. If it's a good bit cooler, then fine, we're, we're, we're good to go. But if it does, if I'm not, if I'm satisfied with it, we'll leave it. If I'm not satisfied with it, it doesn't drop the temperature on it that much or whatever. I may come back, take this out, uh, just tap that and just leave it flowing all the time. Because again, I'm in a warm climate. And if you think about it, heat kills transmissions. Of course, even GM come back with a different bypass here for whoever designed that is, was bad design. But uh, if you think about it, sometimes the transmission is slipping or something when it's cold, you first crank it up in the drive, and it, sometimes it'll shift fine. Then as it warms up, it'll start slipping where maybe torque converter or whatever slipping. So the cold fluid does better. Maybe not cold, cold fluid, you know, uh, but at least cool fluid. So I don't know. Anyway, we're going to, like I said, we're going to try this. If I like it, okay. If not, we'll go back and just tap it and bypass all that. Uh, but let's, let's put this in here and see how it does. So I got a little tranny fluid over here and not the uh, Woke 2023 or 2024 tranny fluid, but the automotive train fluid here watch me get canceled for slaying this crap i'm just going to put a little bit of fl fluid around on these o-rings just to lube them up a little bit nothing you know too crazy a dry seal more likely to tear so just a little wet seal there according to the paperwork and whatnot the seal the big seals here go in these two rings you see i guess i'm gonna put the first one on that way the second one will just go over without trying to fall in that groove like so all right now then and then this little o-ring goes on this piston here like this here it says some dab of trans gel helps hold it in place i don't know we're gonna just do it like that it says insert that into the housing here the ball here this little check ball it's going to go in here and then small end of this cone spring down like that and the big end up. And then this will go in. Like so. And then get the O-ring. So the first O-ring past it and the second is pretty much all past it. Push it down in there. And that stayed pretty much by itself. And then we're gonna use the snap ring in there to um, keep it there. And it didn't specify this to be twisted in any kind of way. It's just a round deal there. So it doesn't, I don't guess it really matters. Um, you just push it on in there, put the snap ring in there to keep it in place. Darn gloves and I got tore, tearing on me. Snap ring here to go back in there. Just insert it like that. And make sure I'm going to push it, um, 
just push it real good. You know, push it in there, make sure it's uh, snapped into that into place. And it does seem to be. I'll use these just to kind of, you know, spin it a little bit to make sure. And it does appear to be all the way in place, all the way around. So, so this should be finished up. I am going to keep these original parts here in this bag it came in in this box in case I ever need it for whatever reason, which I probably won't because if this kit doesn't keep temperatures where I want it, I uh, will probably just do the whole drill, old tap and plug method there. Put slide them back up on the um, the lines so they can both in. I'm gonna show you the gasket that this these fit up in here in just a second too. So that's what I was talking about, putting the O-rings back on the lines. And that is a gasket, if you can see where the rubber pieces are, that metal around the outside edge, it just fits. It's one whole plate that fits up over where the the uh, thing bypass mounts. And I don't know if you can see the line where it just sits on there. But anyway, it's just one big plate. Put it back together the way we took it apart and uh, top off the fluid and, and uh, see how it goes. For that, the torque spec for that center bolt was 15 foot pounds. I was thinking it was, um, I guess that's where I got 15 millimeter earlier. It's 15 foot pounds. Now the other one here that just holds the lines in there, you know, you get a wrench on there, just snug it down good. You ain't gotta be too tight, it's aluminum. So the torque wrench, I mean, this is a half inch. I'm just using a three eighths adapter. It's a Tecton, it comes in this case. And uh, it's a really nice torque wrench. Um, you know, it goes from 10 to 150. And I use this to build a um, this and my little my inch pound one there i've used it to build a uh, the small block 350 in my uh square body and it is, is a really good torque wrench so y'all can check it out it's pretty cheap too uh you know it's from my opinion a good budget torque wrench so we're taking it for another test drive here we're gonna get it up to temperature and see where it runs it's just up to 90 now um after driving for a few minutes but we're gonna see where it runs at and uh check for leaks and if nothing's leaking and it's running cooler uh, we'll be good to go. I'll give y'all an update once it gets up to temperature and uh, let you know where it's running at. So I've been driving for about an hour and 10 minutes now. When I left the house, it was 64 degrees out and the trans temp was 60. And it's only 65 now, if you can see that. Um, anyway, and in this hour and 10, 15 minutes of driving, the highest it's gotten was 100, is 145. So that's between 40 and 45 degree drop from normal. Uh, I would say it's doing pretty good. Uh, the kit, I think it said, it's usually drops at around uh, 40 degrees or so anyway. So uh, it's working like it should. I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, once it gets to summertime here in a couple months and it's in the 90 degree temperatures outside, I, I'll uh, do an update video on what it's running then. And uh, just kind of tell you, I'll keep an eye on it between now and then and just let you know kind of where it stayed like an average between now and then too hope y'all enjoyed that one